Okay, so uh, following the uh, material for the wings part, taper in two directions. Basically, taper means that the height is going to change here. You see it's 0 0.8, at the end is 0 0.4, and also here you see it's 1.6, and this will be 1.6. So it's taper on the uh, depth and on the width. And this one, this example is going to have six different spars. And this is uh, basically, I'm just doing it here at two meters. Okay, this is four meters long. So right in the middle, the cross section, this is the walls. So the length will be 1.2, 0 0.6. And I forgot to put here that the booms of the area, so B1 will be equal to B6. So this one and this one are the same, equal to 900 millimeter square, and then B3 equal to B4 will be the same thing, 900 millimeter square, and then B2 equals to B3 equals to 1200 millimeter square. So this uh, wing spar is subjected to a force here, to a shear force of 100 kilonewtons. And we need to determine what will be the actual stresses at each one of those uh, spars or rods, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then at this section, what will be the shear flow? So at this section, two meters, is right in the middle. So if this is 1.6 and here is 1 uh, 0 0.8, we'll be right in the middle, 1.2, okay? This is what we have here. Same thing for the depth. If here is 0 0.8 and at the tip 0 0.4, right in the middle because this is linear, will be 0 0.6. The thickness of the side panels is three millimeters and the thickness of the top and lower panels or webs is two millimeters. So like I mentioned before, we need to determine the actual stresses and the shear flows at this section, which is located at two meters or so somewhere over here. All right. Okay, so, I mean, I know you know how to do this, but just to do in details, let's first thing, what would be the first thing to do would be to find Shear force and bending moment. At a shear, a shear force and bending moment. Okay. All right, so if we go from statics, really this beam over here, okay, it's a complicated beam, wings bar with, uh, with rods and panels or webs and so on. But really, if we could do simplify it, this would be equal to what? We'll have over here. Uh, let's see. So let's say this will be our full beam. We put here force dy. Okay. And let's say now we needed to calculate what will be the reactions here. So, uh, okay. So let's say I do here f for the roots. and M, so let's say F sub R and M sub R for root right at the fixed end. And we know the overall length here really is what is uh, four meters. Okay, so to find the reactions, what do you do? You do the summation of forces. So this will be on the y, okay, the y direction, 
equal to zero. So this would give you F R plus F Y, which is 100 kilonewtons. equal to zero so which makes sense fr need to counter react this force this force here is going up so this one needs to go down okay so this will be here fr equal to minus 100 kilonewtons all right uh, similarly you will find out that if we take moments at the root, let's say at uh, z equals zero, all right, about right in the middle, all so here we'll have what? So actually, will be okay will be okay i did this one this direction so this this one will be then minus m r plus 100 kilonewtons times four meters so this will give you that m r over here will be equal to 400 kilonewton meters. Okay, so maybe this is the one. Okay, all right, this is statics really. So now if we want to find the loads at the cut, So what do we do? You will take the same beam over here. And let's say now you will make a cut, all right? So if you make the cut, you will have, let's say B, M, and you know that here you're gonna have the value for MR and the value for FR. Okay, so let's say, uh, so in this case, let me do it a little bit faster. When you do the summation on the Y all the time, you're gonna have that V, you have V, plus f r equals zero so you have that the shear force is equal to minus f r and we found that s sub r was equal to minus 100 kilonewtons so it should be equal to v equal to 100 kilonewtons All right, now we take the moment at the cut. What are we gonna have? M minus MR. And if I do it this way, it would be minus F R times Z equal to zero. Remember this is Z, okay? So this will give you at the end that M would be equal to 
mr plus frz so this will give you that m so m sub r from the previous page is equal to 400 kilo to the meters fr is equal to minus 100 minus 100 z All right, so basically I'm done all this stuff. This is really static, so I don't know if you remember if you do the shear. And then the moment diagram. This is Z. Zero, two, four. What is this telling us? That the shear force is constant throughout the cross-section. And that is equal to 100 kilonewtons. All right, that would be the shear force. All right, now what about the bending moment? So this is M Z zero to four. So what do we have? We know it's going to start at 400 over here, so this is kilonewtons, kilonewton meters, and at 400, and at 4 meters will be 400 minus 400 will be zero. So we know it's a straight line over here. All right. This should be a straight line. Okay, so from here we can say that at the cut, located at two meters, all right, it's obvious that the shear force is gonna be equal to 100 kilonewtons because it's constant and that the bending moment I mean, it would just be either one of these ones, uh, I mean, would be just half of this one. You can do it would be 400 minus 200 should be 200 kilonewtons. All right. Okay, so that's really the loads located at the cut. Okay, at the cross section with these dimensions. All right, so now we can go and calculate the shear stresses. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is to calculate the bending stress at the, I'm going to call it road, roads over here. But this could be the, the, the stringers. Okay. Okay. So what I'm talking is about, we're going to calculate what are the other bending stresses over here. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. For this cross section. So the bending stress. 
will be given by the expression uh, sigma sub z will be equal to the moment about let's see which axis so it's bending in this direction will be mx times y from the cross section divided by i x x maybe i should do a little figure here to help you understand what's going on so this is again the cross section of the cut one two three four five six so in this case this is the cg this would be the y and this would be the x okay so the y is from the neutral axis Neutral axis. Okay. So for this example, here we're going to assume that, uh, that the webs or the panels are active in resisting the bending stress. All right. So let us assume. So assume. panels slash webs active in resisting bending stresses okay so that's really on the what we did before will be case two Case one is when you say that all the bending stress is resistant by the rods or the stringers and that the panels only resist uh, shear. Okay? This is the most complicated case. So let's just put this one uh, together. All right? So in this case, MX, we know what it is. MX at the cross section is two hundred kilometer meter y would be what all right so we know that distance here was at the cut 0 0.6 meters so this will be for one two three will be positive 0 0.3 okay and for uh four five six would be negative 0 0.3 so since this is in meters, let's say this will be also in meters over here. Okay, so now what happened is that we need to determine what will be Ixx, the uh, bending moment of inertia. So Ixx over here, we need to have two components. One component will be from the boom, so it will be equal to summation of the B sub R's y sub r square plus the i here let's say of the webs okay for the thickness here remember this one here is top bottom is two millimeters and the side are three millimeters Okay, and here R is just go one, two, up to six, okay, for each one of the bones. All right, so over here, what we're going to have then is, let's first put this one here, so this will be equal to what? So the first step would be equal, so this Let's do first one, three, six, and four. So it would be four times what was the area for one, one, three, four, six. One, three, four, six is 900 millimeters square. 
also fine. Okay, I'm just thinking about we work in millimeters or meters squared. Now let's try to move to millimeters squared, so it will be 900. Millimeter square. So then we need to move this y sub r here. And this one, you see, since it's square, it doesn't matter if it's positive or negative, because 1 and 3 will be positive 0 0.3, but 4 and 6 will be negative 0 0.3. So once you square it, it shouldn't matter, so it will be plus minus. But what I'm doing here, I'm going to transform the uh, 3 meters into millimeters. So this will be 300 millimeters. And this is actually here the, remember the 0 0.3 meters. Okay, let's see if I can stop that noise. Okay, let's see if that's better. All right, so that's the easy one. Now be careful about the webs because let's start by the webs one, six, and three, four. So plus, maybe I'm going to switch colors. What would be the more of of this one? Would be 112 times the base. If you remember the mode of inertia of an object like this about its center is 112 base h cube, where this is b and this is h, okay? And this is about the center, all right? So if we do about the center, and we're just doing it in that direction, okay? Up and down, we're looking at the bending about the x, okay? So it's a bending. But if this one would be like this. Okay, so we just care about the distance to the x-axis. So anyway, it would be 112, what would be the base over here? This is three millimeters, so this would be three millimeters. So we'll have uh, 6 meters, so that would be 600 millimeters cube, all right? And now this is on the x-axis, so I think that would be it. And here we're going to multiply by 2, because we have this one and this one. We have one on each side, 1, 6, and 3, 4. So it would be 1, 6, and 3, 4. Okay? Plus now, the one the top and the bottom. So again, over here, we're going to need 112, okay? So what will be the base? The base here is the uh, yeah. is the 1.2 meters. So if we move that into millimeters, will be 1,200 millimeters. And the thickness would be the two millimeters, so two to the cube. But we need to use the parallax theorem to move the one from the center of this one here. So let's see, here this is the neutral axis. Okay, the top and lower skin, let's say, will be here. All right, so we need to move. And we're calculating about the center of here. This is this one. Now we need to move this one here to here. All right. So in order to do that, we use the parallax theorem. That would be what? The area. 
which is 1200 times 2, so it would be the area, times that distance square, which is what? Should be the 0 0.3, all right, square. 0 0.3 meters, which is 300 millimeters square. And again, we need to do that for the top and lower webs of panel, so times 2. Okay. So if you do this calculation, you're going to get that this is equal to uh, 1080, 10 to the 6. millimeters to the four. Okay. So now let's go back to this. We have everything to calculate now the shear stress at the at each one of the stringers or the booms, okay? So page 68, all right, so the stress, the bending stress, and the booms, okay, which is the same thing as a rod, is equal to what, sigma z, equal to mxy, over i x x okay so over here maybe we need to be a bit careful with the data we know mx from the previous page is equal to 200 kilometer meters so this is going to give us Uh, 200 times 10 to the 3 kilonewton to the millimeter. Okay, or uh, let's leave it, we can leave it this way for now, okay? Or if you want, I don't know which one would be more convenient, 200, 10 to 6, Newtons, millimeter. Now, Y here, depending on the location, would be plus minus 0 0.3 meters, which would be plus minus 300 millimeters, and we know that IXX is equal to 1080, 10 to the 6 millimeters to the 4. So let's do a quick little figure here. All right, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. This would be the natural axis. And if we go back to the beginning of the problem, so this is bending up, which will mean what? The top will be in compression, okay? And this lower part will be in tension. So basically, we know our beam is bending this way, okay? It's bending up. So this will mean that the top
this would mean that at top, let's say sigma 1, will be equal to sigma 2, will be equal to sigma 3, should be in compression. All right, so we should need a value, value, and this should be equal to what? And x is two hundred ten to the six. Newton millimeters. Okay, let me put a minus sign in front, so we know it's going to be compression. So, okay, this is a minus sign, okay? I don't know how to remove this stuff here. Okay, so then we have Y, so for one, two, three will be positive. 300 millimeters. divided by 1080, 10 to the 6, millimeters to the 4. So this is going to give you that sigma 1 equals sigma 2 equals sigma 3. This would be equal to a minus 55. I think it's 555, so let me just put 56. And the units would be Newtons per millimeter square. Okay? Okay, similarly, we have sigma 4, 5, and 6. These two will be in tension. Okay, and should be equal to what? Positive. Okay, 200. 10 to the 6. I'm not going to put the units. Times 300. Divided by 10, 80, 10 to the 6. And this will give us that. Sigma 4, Sigma 5, Sigma 6 will be equal to positive 55.56 Newtons per millimeter square. Okay, so at this point, uh, I'm not going to show you in this video, I will show you in a later video on how to do the uh, final element of this model. But if you just want to go and check, I think I did it somewhere over here. I don't know if it's this one or not. Let me close. Uh, okay, let's say yes. Uh, I'll close. Yes, okay, that's not what I wanted. File, open. You see, I have this one, model one, case two, open. All right, so this is, you see the structure. I think I did in millimeters, so I created a group at the cut. So, subtractive group. And here, I'm not going to show the shears. What I want to show is the, uh, so F5 criteria deform. We want to see the value of the stresses at the rod, so rod actually stress all right and you see we get about the 55 57 okay it's about the same values and since we assume that the panels also resist bending what should be then the stress also on this panel so it should be the same so let's go and check f5 deform uh, i think that would be top y normal 
Yeah, so you see, you should get exactly the same ones. Okay. So on the top and the bottom, and this one should be like the distribution should be here, 55s. It will go to zero over here, and it will be zero. If you remember the, uh, let's go back to the camera here. All right. The distribution should be what about the neutral axis? This is the neutral axis. If I needed to plot it. Let's say we'll go from compression to this side to tension to this side, it will go something like this. Alright. This should be the stress distribution. Okay, here minus 55.56 in compression, this side 55.56 in tension. But it should be a linear distribution. Where it will be zero in the middle. Okay? That's why you see here on this uh, figure, you know, you see you have the switch in sign and in here should be zero. Okay, the bending stress. Again, we'll do that later on. All right, so at least we were able to check this part over here. All right. And again, we are following the same procedure. So now, um, as described in the previous section. So now that we know the bending stresses, we can calculate what will be the forces on each one of those bones. One, two, three, four, five, six, okay? Page 69. All right, so here we have the forces the booms are given by the equations what we have that P C of each one of the booms sub R is equal to the bending stress at the location of the boom times the area of that boom all right then we have that P XR, this is from the previous uh, video, okay, will be equal to PCR delta X delta Z, okay. I could show you from where all this is coming. Okay, but I'm not going to redo the derivation and P Y R will be given by P C R delta Y delta Z. Okay. All right. Where Delta X, Delta Z, and Delta Y, Delta Z are what? Okay. So let's do it over here. So we have the build in N, so And go from this end to let's say here would be 1.2. Okay, so just like if you were looking from the top, the root, this is 1.6 meters. So let's see if I can go to the first page. Okay, here what I'm doing is I'm going from here to the cut that we know is 1.2 meters, okay? And I'm first looking at the taper in 1.6 to 1.2, so the one in the width. So if you want to look at this, this should be what? Uh, ah, let me do this first. This will be one point two meters. 
then our current system is really here is the z but if we look at the changing wave it should be the x okay all right so that means and um, that distance here then should be two meters and the cut so what should be this this is 1.6 minus 1.2 0 0.4 so that means that you're going to have on each one of this side here 0 0.2 0 0.2 all right so now what would be then the change in x with respect to z okay if you just look at the middle what would that be? Will be you have a change in width from 1.6 to 1.2. So it's, we just look at half of it, and this side will be 0 0.2. And what is the total length? Would be 2 meters. The delta C over here. So this will give us 0 0.1. Okay, next we do exactly the same thing, but now we're going to look at the taper here on the change in depth. Okay, so it's 0 0.8, here is 0 0.4. Okay, so let's see what would that give us. I kind of do a similar figure over here. All right, but this time it will be 0 0.8. This would be at the root 0 0.6. The total distance remain unchanged, two meters. So this time on each side, zero point six minus zero point uh, zero point eight minus zero point six zero point uh, two. So this would be zero point one, zero point one. So here we'll have that delta y over delta z. So remember here we're gonna have this time y and z for this figure will be equal to what? 0 0.1 divided by 2. So this will give us 0 0.05. Okay. All right, so we should do the same calculation for uh, each one of the booms. So I'm just going to do a sample calculation. Ended up having too many pages over here. So page 70. Okay. So let's see over here. Uh, all right, let me redo a figure over here. Quick one. All right, so. All 
size at series is two to one. So that's okay. And we have booms over here, over here, one in the middle, then another one over here, another one over here, and there's another one going over here, okay? Okay, so the reason why I'm doing this is that here we're really looking, let's say we do one, two, three, four, five, six. We know the force here and here. It's applied over here. All right. So let's see, we look at the first string over here. Or the first form. All right, so we know this one, we know the top is in compression, so what does that mean? P1 should be some type of this direction, all right? And now, what is the coordinate system here? We have Y, then this will be X, and if we do it this way, this will be like to Z, okay? So really, this one here should be Z, so this force is going to have two components. Let's say you can have here the components. PX1 for the first boom and PY1. What I want to say is that you see this will be always positive, the Y will be positive, the, the, the X should be negative on this side and positive on this side. Okay? Because I'm just going to do the calculation once uh, for one of the booms, and then I'm going to give a table for the other ones, like two, three, four, five, six. So we're going to do the sample calculation at one, and then two, three, four, five, six, I will give you just the result. So sample calculation. At boom one. Okay, so let's say PZ1 will be equal to what? Bending stress at 1 times B1, which will be equal to what? Minus 55.56 times Nine hundred. Okay, I'm going to transform now. This will give you that P C one will be equal to approximately all right. Let me just go and look uh, for one second. Uh, I know I did here the MATLAB, so I will show it to you in a, in a second. All right, so I have here this uh, MATLAB file with all the data. All right, so the pieces are right here. Okay, so let me just run that file. Let me close it, and now let me come with the output. So it's minus 55.56. This is what we were expecting, and then this is, so you see, I put 56, so it's minus 50. Okay, so it should be the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, okay, so minus 50 kilonewtons. Okay. All right. So this should give you, if we did it correct, that value right over there should be minus 50 kilonewtons. Okay. Then we can do PX1 
should be equal to p z1 delta x delta z so it should be equal to minus 50 times the delta x delta z is equal to 0 0.1 okay so that one is very easy this should be equal to px1 will be equal to minus 5 kilonewtons okay and finally we do the same thing py1 would be equal to p c1 times delta y delta z so it should be equal to minus 50 times 0 0.05 so let's check the signs hold that one second so we'll have here so minus Five. This is like the delta x, delta z. So this should be the one minus five. And the last one should be two point five positive on this one. The y. Yeah, p y one will always be positive. So it should be 2.5 to the 3. Okay. And this one is going to be equal to PY1 is equal to 2.5 kilometers. Okay, here be careful because I know the signs, you need to look more at this figure. This is negative, okay, it's going in against the Z. This is negative, but this one will always be positive. So don't work that much about the sign from the math, work more from the figures, okay, from each one of the figures. So really this value here ends up being a positive value, okay? All right. So now I'm going to give you all the other values on the table. So following. And identical. Procedure. For the other booms. Okay, we're gonna have the following table. So page 71. So let me put here, boom. Yeah, one, two, three, four, Six. Here I'm gonna put PZ in kilonewtons, PX in kilonewtons, PY in kilonewtons, and if you wanna compare then the magnitude P here. Also in kilometer. For to find this one, you just do the square, square of x, y, and z square root. Okay. So we are here minus fifty, minus five, 2.5. This will be since it's in compression, fifty point three one negative. Okay, 
So now we do this one for this one, we're going to get minus 66.67. Okay, let's look at the results from the MATLAB. All right, so we're going to get this one. So we have 50 minus 66 minus 50, 50, 66, because this change, because this is now the bottom, this is intention. All right, so let's do column by column. Six minus fifty, fifty, sixty-six point sixty-seven, and positive fifty. All right, so this is in compression. This is your intention. Then we have minus five zero. Plus five, so let me put here the plus sign. One plus five, then we go here to minus five, zero, and forty-five. Okay, let's go and check with the MATLAB that we use. We have uh, where would that be? So it would be PX. So I think PX should be. This one here, so negative zero, positive negative zero five. Okay, py should be this one over here, two point five, three point three three. All right, so it will be plus two point five. This one, we all all of them will be positive plus three point three three plus two point five. Plus two point five plus three point three three plus two point five. Okay, this will be minus sixty six point seven five minus fifty point three one fifty point three one sixty six point seventy five and fifty point three one. Okay. All right, so let me add maybe the only thing I did not define where P over here would be either for tension or compression. P square plus P Y square plus P C square. All right. Okay, so now that we have the, the forces on the on the booms, we can calculate what will be the shear flow on the uh, webs or panels. So the shear flow in the panels slash webs is given by what? So I use the same notation as before, Vx wing would be equal to Vx minus what it will be the Pxr and Vy wing, Vy minus the contribution of the Y component of the actual forces. All right, so Let's first define a return and then I'll give you a quick explanation of this. So this is the shear force in web or panels, okay? But I put web because I use W. This should be the applied Shear force. So this is like whatever is given, the external action. And all these components here are what? Flange or boom load and this is the important part, carrying 
part of applied or external force. Okay, so basically, if you remember for the 2D case, uh, let's say, how do we do the figure? All right, let's say you have here a boom, and let's say we are here the external. This needed to be equal to what? Vy or the well, I don't put Vy or Vx, and this would be a load carried by this flange here. All right, so let's do it. This case would be down, and let's say down, okay? will be here PP. So in any case, the total load at the end will be equal to what? Going by the well. The total external load or applied load will be V. Some of it will be carried by the web. Some of it will be carried by the flanges. So the total amount of shear force carried by the web is the total minus whatever is carried by the flanges. Okay? So that's why I'm going to say here, just take the magnitude. Just take the magnitudes here. For this term and here, just look at the magnitudes. All right, so maybe I have space here to do uh, one of them. So let's first do the Vy, things easier. So we have V, Y of web will be equal to what? dy minus the summation of all the loads on the y direction. All right? So this is equal to what? The external load, we say was equal to 100 kilonewtons. All these ones are also in kilonewtons, so minus all the loads on this y over here. So it would be 2.5 plus 3.33 plus 2.5 plus 2.5 plus 3.33 plus 2.5. Okay, which makes sense. This is the total external load, all right? This V over here. So what will be carried by the web, let's say this one would be whatever is not carried by this flange and this flange. All right, and this will give you that VY web will be equal to 83.33 kilometers. And again, we can go and check with this uh, MATLAB file. So you see this is this, and this should give you zero. And it makes sense because there is no force on the X direction, okay? So the MAT will give you zero, but from the uh, understanding point of view, all right, in this case, there is no force on the X. So all the components here, the X component will cancel each other. Okay, so it should be zero right here. So, uh, all right, maybe I can just do it here. And Vx web equals to Vx minus summation of the all Pxr. So here you see they were all positive. Okay, but here this will cancel each other. Uh, yep, okay, so this should give you here zero. All right, so be careful here, maybe remove here this part of the magnitudes because it might make it confusing. I think it's good for the understanding, but remove the magnitude, just follow with the signs because I think we already took care of, the, of that assumption. So remove here the power magnitudes. Okay, so you substitute and this will give you zero right here. 
that this will give you the x squared equal to zero. All right. So this is becoming a very long video, so probably I'm gonna break it in two parts. All right, so now that we have this, we can find the shear flows. And I'll probably stop here for this video, so uh, now, the shear flow in the panels slash webs can be evaluated using the equation Q of S equal to minus Vy of the web divided by I x x uh, did we use that one okay I'm going to pause for a second here. I'm going to go check one equation. Oops, sorry for that. Okay, so over here, uh, we're going to need two terms. What would be the integral of y t ds? But let's say the B sub R, Y sub R. Okay, so remember this is the term due to the panels slash webs. And this is the term over here for the booms slash flanges okay so again here we're going to do a sample calculation as well all right so uh, Okay, so over here, I mean, if you want to be really accurate, you need to take into consideration both uh, terms, but uh, but for to simplify, and that's really the way it's done in uh, real life, okay? In, uh, okay. For the sake of is in calculations okay and this is the way it's generally done let us neglect the panels webs term Okay, so in other words, we're going to end up just with Q sub S equal minus the Y web over I X X of B sub R Y sub R. And this is really the way it's done in uh, every single textbook, okay? Okay, so what would be the difference? Maybe we can do the simplification, but 
let us see what will be the difference. If we use that equation here, you know we're just going to get an average value between, let's say, two bones, okay? This will just give us a constant average value. All right? This is what we get. If we use this one here, what's going to happen is that you should get a value this way, and then it should be high in the middle. So this should give you the real distribution. So what happened is that in the area of these two would be kind of similar, but you see the maximum value here should be higher than this one. And it can differ up to 15, 20%, okay? So you need to be careful when we go back to the final element and compare. All right, so in order to do this, we need to have a starting point. So what we need to do is to break the structure somewhere so that we can know where to start. So let us do another sketch here. All right, so I have one, two, three, four, five, six. So let us make a cut over here. Cut, okay? So that we know that then the shear flow in that section will be zero. And we know this would be the natural axis from where y will be calculated. Okay. So if we do this, we have q61 equal to q16. Okay, just for simplification, will be equal to zero and we go clockwise. Now we're going to have Q12 is equal to what? Q61, that we know is 0, minus VY web over IXX, B1, Y sub 1. Okay? So this will give you negative, what did we find for the y, 83.33, so negative 83.33 kilonewtons. divided by 10, 80, 10 to the 6 millimeters to the power 4 times B1 is 900 millimeters square times 1 sub 1 would be 0 0.3 or 300 millimeters. All right. And if you do the calculations for this, you're going to get that Q12 is equal to negative 20.83. Newton per millimeter, or what would be the same thing, minus 20.83 kilonewtons per meter. Okay, so similarly, all right, so similarly, we'll have what? Q23 
it with you, we'll be to Q12, okay? Q12 minus the VY web over IXX. And this time will be what? We start from here to here, B2, Y2, okay? So here Y2 will still be 300, so this will give you here minus 48.61. Okay, since we did Newtons per millimeter, I'm just gonna keep this one. Then Q34 will be equal to what? Q23 minus V Y web over I X X. V3 Y sub 3, which should give you minus 69.44. Newtons per millimeter. Okay, from where did I get all this stuff? From again the MATLAB file. So you see here is a uh, minus twenty point uh, eight three. The first one minus forty. This is in newtons. So if you do kilonewtons, it will be forty eight sixty nine point four four, and so on, so on. Okay. So now we get Q45 equal to Q34 minus V Y web I X X and then we get B4 Y4 which would be equal to minus 48.61 Newtons per millimeter. Okay, so just recording this. Uh, just be careful when you move from now four to five, this should be negative 0 0.3 minus 300, okay? So finally we get Q56 equal Q45 minus VY web IXX B5 Y5 equal to minus 20 point eight three. Newtons per millimeter. Okay. So basically what this is going to give us is that uh, the distribution over here would be what? So, and I will stop over here. And I will do the, the rest on the following video. All right, so what do we get? We get negative values for all of them, okay? So we have Q12 supposed to go this way, so actually means that it's negative. Instead of going from 1 to 2, it's going to go from 2 to 1. This one was also negative. We're going to do it this way. This one is also negative. Going this way. This one is as well negative. Going this way. Going this way. And this one we know here that this is zero. So Q16 equal Q61 equal zero because we made the cut. Okay. So the value for this one, let's see if I can find the page. It's here is so I'm just going to put magnitudes because I already took out the sign by reversing the arrow. So this will be 20.83. Then we have the next page is, uh, ah, here, I have it right here, 
68.61, by symmetry it should be the same, 48.61, and the same thing for this one, 20.83, okay? So, okay, this is not over, but I'm gonna stop here this video because I think it's been long enough. All right, thank you for your attention. Okay, so next, uh, what we have is that because VY is not applied at shear center, but as well that we are dealing with a sec with a closed section. So because VY is not applied at shear center and the section is closed, all right? A shear flow due to torsion is induced. So basically, uh, I think it's easier to do a figure for the understanding. So this is our initial section, all right? And this would be equal to the shear flow of an open section. And that's why here between one and two, it was zero. Okay, let me see the numbering. Yeah, so it's one, two, three, four, five, six, okay? So from previous calculation, we found this one is zero over here. It says we're gonna call the final one Q bar. This is the Q we just calculated before. And now, because the shear force is applied at one and this is an op a closed section, it's not an open section, that means that in here, We should have another shear flow due to torsion. Let's call it Q sub nut. Okay, and counterclockwise would be positive. This in the this is the same as in the structures one. All right, or well, this basically summarize or basically means that Q bar equal to Q plus Q naught. Okay. All right, and the Qs were calculated on the previous page. Okay, so you see here was zero because open section. All right. So the next thing we need to do is to find Q sub naught. Okay. So let's say there are Two, uh, two choices to determine Q sub naught. Same thing as before, okay? Personally, I like more this one here, which is the everything that is external need to be counter-reacted by the internal. Okay, so basically the external force, whatever is applied outside, needs to be resisted by the internal forces. And this is my first choice. But sometimes people like more just to do a summation of moments equal to zero. Okay, all right, uh, or this one. Okay. All right, so let's do the 
I like this one, so I'm just going to do it this way, okay? All right, so using summation of moment external equal summation of moments internal. Okay. So over here, when you take moments, it's always about a point. So I'm going to do a figure now. Say point O, point O, and you will understand why. Okay. Positive, counter clockwise, positive. Oops, uh, this is clockwise, positive. Yeah, counter clockwise. This is clockwise, so counter clockwise, positive, counter clockwise. All right, so let me do a figure. So let's see. All right, so we have this one, two, three, six. All right, so now uh, let's put some that may, oh, yeah, something important is that here you have the force. This is the external force, 100 kilonewtons. And then remember that in each one of these ones we had PEY1, no matter if you go up or down, PEY2, PEY3, PEY4, PEY5, PEY6. Right. And point O would be the point right in the middle. All right? And here we have All these shear stresses that we calculate over here, okay? So this would be twenty point eight three, forty eight point six one, sixty four point forty four, forty eight point six one. 20.3 and here is zero. Okay. All right. I just copy what's on that figure. I don't want to add too much to the same figure, but let's see. Uh, this is the first page. So let's see. The dimensions are what? Are like 600 millimeters in height. Six hundred millimeters, and then between each one of the spaces, we also be six hundred. Okay. All right. So over here, I'm going to make a note over here in red. So. Uh, Okay, I want to say always, but because I'm writing this on a page, on a page, I'm going to make it a bit more general, and I will just say in most cases, but you can take it as always. It is convenient. to take moments about the center of cross-section to cancel moments created by 
the P sub Y forces. Okay? The reason here is because sometimes people will have the tendency to take the moments about one of the points. Okay, you can do it to cancel then the moment created by the shear flow. Let's say you take it over here. But then you need to take into consideration the moment is created by P1, P2, PY5, and PY6. Okay? But if you take in the middle, all these moments will cancel each other. All right? So let's go to the next page and do it. All right, so. All right, so let's see. The equation we're using over here is the summation of the external about point O will be equal to the summation of the internals about point O, okay? So this will mean what? What is the moment created by the 600? Would be 100 times 600 about point O would be 100. So it would be 100 kilonewtons so or 110 to the three times 600 millimeters. And now, so this will create a moment again going in that direction so it's normal that this one counter react the action of this one okay all right so this will be a q bar one two will be the new one so we'll have q bar one two the one we need to calculate time 600 which is the distance between one between 1 and 2 is 600, times the arm would be 600 divided by 2, times 600 divided by 2. We do the same thing for the other term, plus Q bar 2, 3, times 600, times 600 divided by 2. Okay, this is this one over here, all right? Now this one will be Q34 will be what? Q34 times 600 times, so 600 for the force, 600 the arm, okay? Would be plus Q bar 34 times 600 times 600. Now we do the lower one, so it will be 4, 5, 600 times 300, 5, 6, 300, uh, 600 times 600 divided by 2. So it would be Q for 5 times 600 times 600 divided by 2 plus Q, oh, I forgot the bars, Q bar 5, 6 times 600 times 600 divided by 2. Okay, so this is the external over here, and this will be the internal. Now, remember from the previous page, okay, where we know that Q bar is Q plus Q naught. Okay, so This will mean what? That Q, so I'll do it in detail in this case. So Q bar one, two would be equal to what? Minus 20.83 plus Q naught, Q bar two, three, Q bar three, four, Q bar four, five, Q bar five, six, all right? So it will be minus 48.61 plus Q naught. Again, all these values are this one here, okay? 20.83, 48.61. And they go in the negative direction, okay? We got it. And then this one would be uh, Q34 is 
minus sixty nine point four four plus q naught minus forty eight point six one plus q naught minus twenty point eight three plus q naught. Okay. So now if you substitute all these values over here into over here, you find out that the only unknown will be q sub naught, and you should be able to solve it. Okay. So substituting the Q bars into moment equation and solving For Q sub naught, okay, you get that Q sub naught is equal to seventy six point three nine newtons per millimeter. Okay, uh, all right. So before we move to uh, add both uh, shear flows to find the final solution, I'm just gonna mention something quick. Uh, An alternate equation to determine Q sub naught is available. Okay. So basically, the theory is the same thing, but you will have. Summation of external moment that will remain unchanged. So let's say here we take about point O, will be equal to the summation of the internal about point O. But over here you need to be careful because what you will have is that where the summation of the internals about point O, Instead of doing the same thing as before, we're going to say it's equal to the normal shear flows, not the Q bar. So it would be Q uh, ds would be the value of the force times the arm. Let me call this one uh, d. Okay. And now the effect of the uh, new shear flow due to torsion will be 2 area of the cross section, all right, times Q sub naught. All right, so if we do it that way, what we have is that you're gonna have the same thing. So you do the external will be the same thing as before, will be 110 to the three, 100 kilonewtons times 600. But this time you're not gonna use the Q bars, you're gonna use the Q12. So it will be again, same thing as before, Q12 times 600 times 300 plus Q23 600 times 300 plus Q34 600 times 600. Okay, it's not the Q bar, it's just a normal Q, so this is the uh, 20.83, okay? plus Q45, 600 times 300, plus Q56, 600 times 300, and 61 is zero, so I'm not putting in, 
But now the term we don't have to forget is that you're gonna have here plus two a q sub naught. Okay. All right, where this a value over here. So this is point O is the area of the cross section. Okay, so in this case, this is what? Uh, 1200 times 600. All right, so if we solve it, so solving for Q sub naught, so now in that equation, okay, Q12 over here is equal to, um, what's that page from before? Q12 is minus 20.83, maybe let's put it over here. So this is uh, 20.83, this will be minus 48.61, this would be minus 69.44, okay, 45 would be minus 48.61, and this one minus 20.83. So you see the only unknown would be Q sub naught, and obviously, if you solve for Q sub naught, you're going to get that Q sub naught will be equal to 76.39 newtons per millimeter. All right. So now we're almost done. So we can find the final shear distribution. So next, let's go to the next page. Okay. All right, page 77. So remember that we know that the final shear distribution here all right will be equal to whatever we had before for the open section plus the q sub not so All right, and we are here, plus Q, Q plus Q sub naught, okay? All right, so let's see what we have. So this distribution here was given by what? Let's see if I can do both of them at once. Okay, so over here, just be careful here because don't put any sign, just put the direction. So this is 20.83, this is 48.61, if I remember right, this is 48.61, this one is 20.83 and let's see what we had on the previous page and this one here was 69.44 okay and now here we're gonna have our Q sub naught
which is positive, so it means it goes counterclockwise, okay? So this will be our Q sub naught, where we know Q sub naught is equal to 76.39, all right? So that means that the final distribution, which would be the one on this side, put it a bit bigger, Let's see, one, two, three, five, six, okay, five, six, alright, will be equal to what? This will be equal here, so this goes this way, this is going to give us 55 55.56. Twenty seven point seventy two. So this one minus this, okay, but they go in the opposite direction. Then this one would give uh, so this one would be up seventy six point three nine. This should be symmetric, so it should be fifty five point five six. 27.77 and okay let me check the value for this one hold on one second okay guys so to check the calculations I went to the, to the MATLAB file I think I actually uh, let's see I think I put 27.72, but should be 27.77. And this should be one, one, two, three, one, two, three, 6.94 going down. Okay. So once we go back to this uh, oops, page over here, here I put 72 here on top, should be 77. Sorry for that. And then this one is, which is say 6.94. 94. All right. So you want to just going to put those values over here. So for example, this first one here was, uh, was what? The original one was minus 20.83 plus 76.39 should give us 55.39. Five, six then should be minus forty eight point six one plus seventy six point three nine should give us twenty seven point seventy seven and it should be a uh, newtons per millimeter okay q three four should be what uh sixty nine point four four so it's going up and this one's going to go down. Okay. So maybe put this one as negative plus 76.39 will be equal to the 6.94 going down. This most important, the sign is the direction. Okay. You look what I'm doing here. Then Q45 is the same as this one. So it would be, let's say minus 48.61 plus 76. 0.39 would be 27.77 then minus 20.83 plus 76.39 should be equal to the 55.56 and last one but not least this one here is equal to what zero plus 76.39 equal to 76 0.39 and all this should be newtons per millimeter. Or will it be the same thing, uh, kilonewtons per meter? But I think that's what I used on the previous page. So you see newtons per millimeter for the Q sum knot. All right, and this is basically uh, the end of the problem. All right. So next, I'll probably try to do like uh, 
Nastran final element model to try to make some comparison. We won't be able to make the exact comparison because remember, we did study with the assumption that the plates, the skins or the webs were uh, resisting um, bending, but when we calculated these cues, we did not assume it, okay, to simplify the calculations. Anyway, this will be the end of the video.